stand last as long as he could pass and punt. When enough time had gone by to allow us to look back on them, we sometimes discussed the events leading up to his accident. I maintain that the duel was started at all, but Jim said it started long before that. He said it started the summer Dill came to us, when Dill gave us the idea of making Drew Bradley come out. My name is Jean Louise, but when I was that young girl there, I was Wayne. They called me Scout. You hear me, Scout? What's my Addison? Addison. That's my father. Back then, he seemed ancient, feeble. He was a lawyer and nearly 50. When my brother Jim asked him why he was so old, he said he got started late, which we thought reflected on his manliness. He was much older than the parents of our school contemporaries. And there was nothing Jim or I could say about it. Anyway. People moved slow back then. 
And somehow it was hot. I bet it was 24 hours long, but seemed longer. There was no hurry. There was nowhere to go. Nothing to buy. And no money to buy. Lack of money is no excuse to let a place go like that. Well, at least they could cut the Johnson grass and rabbit tobacco, but of course they're rabbit. Miss <laughs> Stephanie Crawford, a neighborhood soul. According to her, everybody in Macon has a street. A drinking street, a gambling street, a mean street, a fun street. With no actions and minds his own business, every third married member is morbid. The truth is not in the Della Field. All the boots are walk like that. Why, Mrs. Grace, it's gin out of a little evening to follow. It's nothing unusual. Why, poor mother, it's the same. <laughs> she was also your principal source of information on Boo Radley. When that boy was in his teens, he took up with some bad ones from old Sarah. Well, they were arrested on charges of disorderly conduct. The son of a piece of fault and battery. And used an abusive and profane language in the presence and hearing of a female. Well, Boo was released from his father, who shut him up in that house over there. He wasn't seen again for 15 years. I have to ask, as she intended, Miss Stephanie, what happened 15 years later? Well, Boo was sitting in his living room, hunting some items out of the maker, tripping some paste in his scrapbook. Boo's father passed by. He drove the scissors into his parents' leg, pulled them out, wiped them on his pants, and resumed his activities. Boo was at, was at 23. His father said no rat is going to get in his same about So he kept him home. Where he is till this day. How do you know? How can you be sure he's still in it? Because I haven't seen him being carried out yet. <laughs> Jim and I had never seen him. That didn't come to late. And when it did, we were in no condition to take much notice. Being in fear for our lives. People said, who had it and how not when the boo was there? When his bed was froze and a cold snap, it was because he breathed them. The tall rabbits and palm trees dropped their fruit and he joined the schoolyard in the back. But the nuts lay untouched. Randy Pecan will kill you. A baseball hitting the rabbit yard with a lost ball with no questions asked. My brother Jim, the one of the hot dogs got thrown. Alabama must be playing in the Rose Bowl with Jim scoring the winning touchdown. Way to go at this time of day, Jeremy Fitch. Playing hooky, I suppose. Well, I'll just call the principal and check. Oh, it's Saturday, Mr. Bowles. I wonder if your father knows where you are. Well, of course he does. Marty Atkinson told me that you broke down her summer on lava this morning. <laughs> well, she's going to call your father. Then you'll wish you'd never seen the light of day. Why, the near her stubborn on my Don't you contradict me! If they don't put you in reform school by this time next week, my name's not you, Bose. Miss Peters walked ahead of the road. If she was on the porch when Jim and I passed, we'd be raped by her wrathful gaze, subjected to ruthless interrogation regarding our behavior and given a melancholy prediction of what we'd amount to when we grew up, which was always nothing. Jim and I hated her. We had no idea she was fighting a hard time. Miss Carroll? Reverend Scott of the First Purpose Church called First Purpose because it was paid for with the first earnings of the free slave. Afternoon, Reverend. It's about Brother Tom Robinson's call. We have to do more for his wife and children. Yes, Reverend. The collection for the next three Sundays will go to heaven. Please encourage everyone to bring what they can. Why do you all take the collection to Tom Robinson's wife? To tell you the truth, Miss Dean Louise, that was time and hard to get work these days. Negro settlement. And 
and the only thing Bob knew could hold on to that made him feel better than his nearest neighbor was that if he washed the fire soap in very hot water, his skin was white. Why did you stop talking? So did to you. Remember that now, I'm not surprised they stopped talking. Well, I'd like to call to me. If I can see me, I'll see you Sunday, Mr. Cal. <laughs> You mean what they said you did? Oh, Bob, well, you look here from home and the girl and had to put in jail. But everyone tonight would know what you mean. You think both would be glad to hire Tom Squire. Cal, what does it mean he attacked her? You'll have to ask Mr. Fitch about that. You heard me? I had to think it out. That was the summer deal of Katie's life. Jim and I heard a noise one morning. We raised the fence to see if it was a puppy. Instead, we found someone sitting, staring at it. Sitting down, it wasn't much taller than a collar. We stared at him until he spoke. Hey! Hey, Sam! <laughs> Don't call me Jim. I can read. Her what? His real name was Charles Baker Harris. He'd be sent to spend the summer with an aunt. We came to no deal as a as a pocket Merlin whose head team with eccentric plans, strange longings, and quaint fancies. He was to be my childhood fiance, which was nice for a girl, even if he wasn't very big. I'm little, he said one time, but I'm old. You wasn't for your father? That's right. Well, did I know that? What do you mean? You know, that's what you mean, Daddy. Because I haven't got one. Is it dead? No. When old Mr. Rabbit died, some folks thought Boo would come out. They had another thing coming. His old brother Nathan, that him, moved in and took over his father's place. At least Nathan Rabbit would speak to us. How do you do, Mr. Nathan? Afternoon. <laughs> Looking back for a place to begin, perhaps it would be what happens next. Now, Boo Rabbit's in there all by himself. I wonder what he does. Looks like he'd stick his head out of the door sometimes. Oh, he knows that. But only when he hits what? I've seen his tracks in our backyard many mornings. And one night I even heard him scratching around that screen. I wonder what he looks like. Well, judging from his tracks, he's about six and a half feet tall. And he eats raw, squirrels, and all the cats he can catch. <laughs> what does he can have yellow? Rock. Is that hot? And most of the time he drew. Why? Because, sir, we thought he might 
enjoy it? <laughs> I see. So I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you one time. Don't bother that man. So why do we have a Why do we have a he goes? It's his own business. He wants to stay inside his own house. He has every right to stay inside. Free from the attention of inquisitive children. Now how would you like if I borrowed you into your room tonight without my uncle? Well, that's it. Because we're not crazy. What Mr. Radley does may seem peculiar to us, but it does not seem peculiar to him. Well, anybody that all of us. Well, that is a There's something I'd like to ask. If you'll do it, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds. You see, you never really understand another person until you consider things from his point of view, sir, until you climb into his skin, walk around him. You want us to consider things from who Radley's point of view? They need everyone. Stay out of there. right. Well, I expect I'm asking too much. Walk the kind of hand. I've got much better plans. See you. Ask them all, Walter. Regardless of any plans, you two are to stay away from that house unless you buy it. This view is the bench and the turn Well, thank you very much. I'd like to pay Pat for your services and all the mortgage and the This is just fine. Uh, Jim, take this action. Count. I'd say you'll be able to test it, Walter. Now, you put in an awful lot of time. Well, let's see now. You, you dropped a load of snow and wood in the backyard and a uh, sack of hickory nuts. At Christmas, there was a crate of small eggs and holly and now a bag of turnip greens. I'm more than paid. If you say so. The old boys in my class still miss the time pass. We had a disagreement the other day. Hey, well, you were that boy myself, little lady. I did actually mean that bad. <laughs> He can't learn to defend himself against a girl, and I guess he just has to learn to take it. Yeah, much obliged, Miss Bennett. Anytime I can be a Why do you have so much trouble? Because that's the only way to count. Oh, King Paul? We are, indeed. King Paul, the Paul? And not exactly. You see, the Cunningham's a country folks, and, and this depression's hit him for harvest. What was your trouble with my client's boy? He said to me, I am black. Get through what's coming without catching major usual disease. 
uh, reasonable people go stark raving mad when anything involving a Negro comes up. It's something I don't pretend to understand. Tom Boston has nothing great at Goes to the essence of a man's conscience. Suppose you're wrong about it. What's that? Well, most people think that they're right and you're wrong. And they're entitled to think that. They're entitled to full respect for their opinions. But before I can live with other folks, I've got to live with myself. There's one thing that doesn't abide by majority rule. That's a person's conscience. Jim! Jim, hi! I thought I had interesting information to pass along to Jim. Apparently, I thought it was more complex than we realized. Certainly, this new aspect of his legal practice was more interesting than doing papers in an office. I found my brother unresponsive. Problems with the Tom Robinson case wasn't quite as new to Jim as it was to me. Thinking back on it now, probably it was abuse from older boys that made him so eager to involve his father in sensible community activities, such as the game of touch football. All such invitations were politely declined. Then a few weeks later, something happened. Something that was to make our father even more of a puzzle. Tension in the town of the approaching trial was getting drunk hot. But what happened had nothing to do with that. It had to do with a liver-colored bird dog named Tim. Why did I make it so hard? Because I tell you, something's wrong with that dog. Hey, Josh, you can wrap it? Stop it, Tim. Don't stop that. Don't stop. What is it, Tim? I can't come out here every time you want me. What's up, wrong? That dog down there. I've got time left for the dog's foot right now. No, Kelly, something's wrong with him. I think I've looked to the right. I had my brothers that they shot. 
shotgun. Dead in the door. Just a little bit of right. I always was. Well, I'm that little boy coming out with a pickup. Stay where you are. Yes, you got blood, Mr. Fetch. Let's say it never leaves. Oh, Al. Yes, she is. I didn't know. I saw that. One shot, bitch. <laughs> Jim, you and your sister stay away from that dog. He's just as dangerous dead in the rock. Yes, sir. Well, Agatha, what's up? What's the matter? What? Well, it's tough. Didn't you know your dad? Hard to say. Well, what's your hurry now? Can I get back to work up the pieces for the crowd? Don't remind me. Maybe Tim wasn't really mad. Maybe he was just full of fleas and had a big shot in bed. If that Tim was still hung up the street, maybe you'd be seeing a different too. Well, maybe I would. I'll admit I felt the look when I saw Adam <laughs> Did you see him, Scout? Oh, the sun is like that gun was a part of it. And he did so fast. That man released five minutes like he did anything. <laughs> well, now, Miss Jean Louise, still think your father can't do anything? Still ashamed of him? No, man. Got to mention the other day, he was a dead shot in Macon County. Dead shot? Something for you to think about, Jeff Finch. Why, when he was a boy, his nickname was Old One Shot. Why, if he shot 15 times and hit 14 dubs, he'd complain about wasting ammunition. Well, how come he never said anything about it? Well, why he never did that now? If your father said anything, he's civilized. Marksmanship like that, but gifts of God. I think maybe he put his gun down and realized God was giving him an upstairs advantage. Looks to me like he's too proud of it. People like your father never bother about five their gifts. This bewildered a bit unsettled our established view about it. It was something to talk over. No, celebrate. But we didn't get involved. Well, I had something to tell you too, Aunt Maggie. Well, I really don't know if we should say anything about it, Scout. I'm not going to be able to get the light on. I'm not going to be able to get the light on. 
Get off at the junction and walk the rest of the way. Well, how come you run off? I didn't run off. Just decided I'd come back here, that's all. You want to say you can't write, no? I want to say you. Oh, Dad! We're going to have a hot stop with I don't care. Gee, it's a hot Maybe you better come back later. I'm not going. Look at me, Dad. We've got a visitor. Here's Bill. Come back with the brain. He knows how to walk the catwalk. Bill. Jim, I had a phone call a few minutes ago. Are you responsible for the damage of those flowers? Well, yes, sir. Why did you do it? Well, Mr. Bowles said you lost the nigger. And that's why you destroyed her garden. Yes, sir. Son, I have no doubt you've been annoyed by your contemporaries about me lawing for niggers, as you say. But to do something like this to a sick old lady is, is inexcusable. I strongly advise you to go over and have a talk with talk to her. Right now. Let's go. 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 Let's go
sorry in the arm. Oh, and that's what she said. She's old and she's ill. I'll have work. <coughs> well, have it she wants me to read to her. She wants me to come over every afternoon and read aloud for two hours. Addison, do I have to? You do. Well, my house is so dark and creepy, there's shadows on the ceiling. <laughs> that should have been to your imagination. Just pretend you're inside the family house. <laughs>
know that lady. And I feel my voice said, hey, let's get out of here, boys. We're going home. Thank 
inside, you're making it safe. Did you during all this running, run for a dog? Was a no me. Didn't you think the nature of your daughter's injuries warranted your immediate medical attention? I ain't ever called a doctor in my life. Besides, I had it cost me five dollars. Now, that all the question is not for Mr. Ewell, you, you heard the sheriff's testimony, didn't you? Yeah. Do you agree with his description of your daughter's injuries that her right eye was blackened and she was beaten around the right side of her face? I hold with everything Heck Tate said. He said her right eye was blackened. I hold with Heck Tate. Mr. Ewell, can you read your right? Objection. Can't see what the witness's literacy has to do with the case. It's irrelevant and immaterial. Judge, if you will allow the question plus another one you'll soon see. Well, it seems like you know. All right. But make sure we see that. Oh. Fall back to Dr. Remember, he said never, never, never ask a question on cross examination. Let the R.A. know the answer. Would you sure. write the name for me? Mr. Mike Command, the little Richard Kate. Almost positively will. How does he think I signed my relief check? <laughs> <laughs> Write your name for us, please. Clearly now so the jury can see you. You know what? What is so interesting? He's left hand, that's it. What's about being left handed has to do with it? Judge, he's trying to take advantage of me. Pretty lawyers like that at the speech. Trying to take advantage of me all the time with their pretty But they don't change what I thought I was saying again. I'm sorry, that's all. Wait. How old are you? 
little house up there with me, Miss Mayella. I don't remember things as well as I used to. I, I may ask you some things you've already said, but you'll give me an answer, won't you? Good. Tom Robinson, or 
window fall? Yeah, well, what did your father really see at that window? Why don't you tell the truth, child? Didn't Bob you will beat you up? I got something to say. You want to tell us what happened? Miss Mantle was sitting on the porch like she said she was. 
seem real quiet like. I didn't quite know why. She called me to come and have help on him. I went inside the fence and looked for some pinning to work on. I didn't see none. She said, no, nah, I got something for you to do inside the house. The old door is off again. I said, Miss Mailey, you got a screw job. She said she had. And I went up the steps. She motioned for me to come in. And I went in and looked at the door. I said, Miss Mailey, this door looks all right. Those hands, it was all right. And then she shut the door. Mr. Fitch, I was wondering why it's so quiet like it could come to me. There wasn't a child in the place. Not a one. I said, Miss Mayor, I'm going to chill her. Go on. And she said, she sort of laughed. She said, they all go to town to get ice cream. She said, it's not good to say it, except Nichols. But I've done it. They all go to town. Tom, what did you say to you? I said something like, for Miss Mayella, it was like smart of you to treat him like that. She said, you think so? I don't think she understood what I meant. I mean, it, it was smart of her to say it like that, and I said, how to treat him? I just said, go on. So I said, I'd best be going, because I couldn't do nothing for her. She said, oh, yes, I could. And I asked her, what? She said, step on that chair, Jan. The box up the top of the ship, bro. Not the same one you bust yet. No, sir. <laughs> Another one. Most, most as tall as the room. So I done like she told me. Just when I was reaching, she grabbed me around my waist. She scared me so bad that she I hopped around and turned to chill. That was the only thing, the only piece of furniture was stood in that room when I left Mr. Bench. I spoke, oh God. Um, what happened after you turned the chair over? Tom, you swore to tell the whole truth. What happened after that? Answer the question. She sort of jumped at me. Jumped? Why? Wow. <coughs> no, sir. She hugged me around the way. What did she do to you? Kissed me on the side of the face. She said she never had arms around the grown man before. She might as well start with a nigga. She said, What her daddy did to it didn't count. She said, Give me back, nigga. I said, Miss Ella, let me out of here. I tried to run, but she got her back to the door. I said, Miss Ella, let me pass. This is my said, young Mr. Yu, yonder. He hollered through the window. What did you say? Something not fit to say. Not fit to be spoken and chilling again, sir. Uh, you must tell the jury what he said. He said, you got them before I'll kill you. Then what happened? I was running so fast, Mr. Finch, I don't know what happened. Tom, did you rape me up you? I did not. Did you harm her in any way? I did not. Did you resist her advances? Mr. Fence, I tried to without being ugly. I didn't want to be ugly. I didn't want to push her or nothing. Let's go back to Mr. Ewell. Who was she talking to? She was looking to talk to Mr. Mayella. Then you ran. I sure did. Why did you run? I was scared, sir. Why were you scared? Mr. Fence, if you would like my king, you'd be scared too. I'm going to tell the whole lot of you one thing right now. Tom Robbins has worked for me for eight years, and I have never had a special trouble out of it. Not one bet. How about you don't mind me with these? You have something to say. You can say it. I know. Talk to Tom. You will disregard the talk about these. All right, Mr. Gilman. You got a study made for disorder kind of problem. It was a misdemeanor and it's in the record, Judge. Witness will answer, though. Yes, sir. I have 30 days. 
You're all too good at busting up killing and ship rolls with just one arm, aren't you? I'm right, so uh, strong enough to choke the breath out of a woman. I've never done that, sir. But just strong enough. I'm right, so uh, I drive her for a long time, and boy. Oh, so, sir, I never looked at her. And you were mighty polite to you all this chopping. What wrong with you, boy? I tried to help her out, sir. It was mighty generous. Why were you so anxious to do that woman's chore? It looked like she didn't have somebody to help her, sir. With Mr. Yule and seven children on the pay bar? Well, I said it looked like they were helping her. You did all this work and hauled it. Uh, oh, she a goodness boy? I just tried to help her out, sir. Well, you're a mighty good fellow, it seems. Did all this work for not one penny? Yes, sir. I felt very sorry for her. You seem to try more than the rest of them. You felt sorry? You felt sorry? Now you were about to have to use the last of the 21st and she asked you to come in and put us on the ship room. No, sir. Do you deny you were about to have No, sir. She said she asked you to come in and put us on the ship room. Is that right? No, sir. You think she's lying, boy? I don't think she's lying. She's making a stick in her mind. Tell me, boy, why did you run away? I'm scared, sir. If you had a clear conscience, boy, why were you so scared? Like I said before, it wasn't the age of my plan to be in a fix like that. Yeah, but you weren't in a fix. You testified you were resisting her advance. Or were you scared she might hurt you? I mean, fuck like you. No, sir, I'm scared I'd be a court just like I am now. Scared you'd have to face us for what you did. No, sir, scared I'd have to face us for what I didn't do. Boy. I just don't see. Get up going, Jill. You better take him out of here. I don't care. Looks like he's a little thin-eyed. You better take him outside, Mr. Louise. Why, Come on. I'm okay. Get up. 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 Two little statues. Carved by the throat. Looks like a boy and a girl. Got in the knot hole in the rabbit tree. Girl, what could be you? Them in the boy's gym. Who carved them, you reckon? That is in the rabbit tree. I think I'm beginning to understand why Blue Rabbit stays shut up in his house. It's because he wants to stay inside. That girl might get his hair. I'm down here, Doug. Well, maybe. Maybe it's not like the way most people can go out of the way to despise each other. Why does the girl have to do turn while we're sitting away? Why does Pop so hateful? He'll set his job. But he didn't have to sneer and call him bored. That's just Mr. Gilbert's wife. They can all think that way. Those stories, I mean. Mr. Fitch doesn't. Well, he's not an example, Bill. He will return to the courtroom and his home on the street. Might be better if that is and he was just you realize that your father's not any better than your man. Huh? What do you care about most people? You're expecting a lot from a very young girl, Bill. Maybe when you've seen more of the world, this town even. It's not an ugly and crying thing. I can't have to touch you back in. And we're going to drive me. I'm just going to drive you. I'm 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 going to dr
dishes brought out of the fence. Now I have nothing but pity in my heart for the chief witness for the state. But my pity does not extend to her putting a man's life at stake. And that's what she's done. Done it in an effort to get rid of her guilt. I say guilt because it was guilt that motivated her. She committed no crime. But she broke a rigid code of our society. A code so severe that whoever breaks it is hanging from our midst and unfit to live. She's the victim of cruel poverty and ignorance. But she knew full well the enormity of her offense, and she persisted. She persisted, and her subsequent reaction is, is something every child has done. She tried to put the evidence of her offense away, out of sight. What was the evidence? Not a stolen toy to be hidden. The evidence that must be destroyed is Tom Robinson, a human being. Tom Robinson, a daily reminder of what she did. What did she do? She tempted to death. She did something that in our society is, is unspeakable. She's quiet. And she tempted a nigger. Not an old uncle, but, but a strong young black man. No code mattered to her before she broke it. But it came crashing down on her afterwards. <coughs> her father saw what happened. And what did he do? <coughs> there is circumstantial evidence to the effect that Mayella Ewell was beaten savagely by someone who led almost exclusively with his left hand. Down here to hell! <coughs> then Mr. Ewell swore out a warrant, no doubt signing it with his left hand. And Tom Robinson now stands before you, having taken the oath that the only good hand he possesses, his right hand. You're lying, or you can come up, son. Or you'll be fired from the table. <coughs> so a quiet, respectable Negro man who had the unmitigated temerity to feel sorry for a white woman is all dropping. Wow. He's had it for his word against, against his two white accusers. Now I need not remind you of their conduct here in court. Their simple confidence that you gentlemen would go along with them on the assumption, the evil assumption, that all Negroes lie. <coughs> that all the girls are, are basically immoral, an assumption one associates with minds of their caliber. However, you <coughs> And the truth is, some Negroes lie. And some Negro men are not to be trusted around with us like all white. And so was some white. <coughs> This is a truth that applies to the entire human race and to no particulars. In this year of grace, 1935, <coughs> we're beginning to hear more and more reference to Thomas Jefferson about all men being created equal. But we know that all men are not created equal. In the sense that some men are smarter than others. Some have more opportunity because they're born with it. Some men make more money. Some ladies make better tanks. Some people are born gifted beyond the normal state. 
But there is one way in which all men are created equal. There's one human institution that makes the pauper the equal to the Rockefeller, the stupid man the equal to the Einstein. That institution, gentlemen, is a court of law. In our courts, all men are created equal. <coughs> now, I'm delighted to believe so firmly in the integrity of our courts and in the jurors. That's no ideal to me. That is a living, working reality. But a court is only as sound as the jury. And a jury is only as sound as the men who make it up. Now, I'm confident you gentlemen will review without passion the evidence you've heard, come to a decision, and restore this defendant to his family. In the name of God, do your duty.
<laughs> Several hours went by and we waited. I don't think anybody expected the jury to be out so terribly long. Yeah, I did a long time. Sure is, Jack. My brother was on the favorable indication. Meanwhile, nobody left. Nobody moved around. Then suddenly, it was happening. The court found the order. Like you to 
know that there are some men who were born into this world to do our unpleasant jobs for us. Your father's one of them. Well... Don't you know well me, sir. You're just not old enough to appreciate what I said. Why well, don't we making folks from the best folks in the world? We're the safest folks in the world. We're so rarely called on to be Christians, but when we are, we've got men like Addison to go for us. But who feels that way about you? A handful of people in this town that say that fair play isn't marked white only. Who? Who is one thing to help Tom Robinson? His friends, for one thing, and people like us. We exist too. People like Judge Taylor. People like Hey, start using your head, Jeff. Did it ever occur to you that Judge Taylor named his advocate to defend Tom was no accident? That Judge Taylor might have had his reason? Jackie, you didn't cut my friend in one. One just stop. You're beginning to realize a little more to it than you thought. Whether Maycomb knows it or not, we're paying your father the highest tribute we can pay a man. We trust him to do right. And why is it big? This Stephanie talks nonsense. Maybe he didn't get an acquittal, but he got something. I was sitting in court waiting, and as I waited, I thought, Atticus Finch won't win. He can't win. But he's the only man in these parties who can keep a jury out so long in a case like this. And I thought to myself, take note of this time and this place. It's 1935, and it's Maycomb, Alabama, and we're making a step. It's just a baby step, but it's a step. I'm going into my kitchen now, and I'm going to make a cake. I would be pleased if you all would come over and have some of my cake. Oh, yes, yeah, my... Thank you. Mr. Dill? No, 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 thank you. I, I better stop over to Aunt Rachel first. Well, that's something to do, right? Thomas. 
set up for quite a few changes. I ain't just kissed like a nigga to cut and run.
like two of his time to bring his arm off. It'd be a while before Tim could play football again. He added his insurance to Jim once again, just under sedation. Meanwhile, that case had been investigated, and when he came to the porch, there was something odd about him. Atticus? <coughs> Come in, Jack. You find anything? I can't conceive anyone who do this. Look there, sir. What is it, Jack? Bob Hill was lying on the ground out there with a kitchen knife stuck up under a grill. He's dead. Dead? You sure? He's good to death. He won't hurt these children again. Wow. Made a hell low down scoundrel enough to let her in and make right enough to kill the only guy I have the name spared me. If he hadn't, I thought I'd be the one who'd come. Well, now you know better. He broke Jim's arm and grabbed you. Then what happened? He stuck and I can help. Well, who was it? Well, there he is, Mr. Tice. We'll tell you his name.
across the canoe. A young boy and girl shout, running to meet their father coming home. The boy going after Mrs. DeVos' chameleon. The children excited about surprises found in a knot hole. And then a stormy night, and those children Neighbors bring food with death, flowers with illness, and little things in between. Boo Radley was our neighbor. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watching chain, a pair of good luck pennies, and our lives. The neighbors give in return. We never put back into that tree what we took out of it. We had given him nothing. Thank you. 